Welcome to How to Film Weddings. I am Nick, and today I'm talking about four common mistakes wedding filmmakers make while editing and how to avoid them. Number one, the jump cut. Now this is probably the most common mistake that many filmmakers make when creating their wedding videos. A jump cut is whenever you go from point A to point B and something happens in the middle and you cut that out. A common place where this happened is during the processional of maybe your highlight video, where you have a couple walking down the aisle, then immediately you cut to another one and it's like the, the camera doesn't move, but the people are being replaced. A way to avoid jump cuts is by going to different camera angles, or maybe you have someone walking down and then you cut to uh, a wide shot of an empty ceremony room, something like that. Break it up so that you're not going from one shot to another shot. This is how you avoid jump cuts. Now for certain types of wedding filmmakers, jump cuts work and they fit with the beat of the music and everything fits together. But many times, that's not the filmmaker's style, but they use them because they want to include the footage. It can be very jarring to the audience and kind of take you out of the video. Number two, ghost mouth. Now, I really don't know what the real term for this is, but it was pointed out to me a long time ago that if mouths are moving on screen, there needs to be some sort of audio with it. You will often see this during uh, bridal prep or groom prep where people are talking but there isn't any audio coming out. Um, maybe during cocktail hour or people sitting in, in, in the ceremony before it even starts and they're just talking to each other and we're not hearing anything. Or stuff at the reception, maybe you're, you're not including audio of the toast but you're including the person speaking um, just to show that shot or something like that. This is what I call ghost mouth. And if someone is on screen and their mouth is moving, there needs to be audio. Now it doesn't have to be good, it doesn't have to be clean, it can be ambient from the room, but if everyone starts laughing and you don't hear that, it can take you out. Now it's not one of those things that maybe you'll pick up on while you're watching it, but if it's added in there, it just adds another layer of uh, realism to really submerge you into the film. So if someone's mouth is moving, there needs to be audio with it. Or if it's a great shot and their mouth is moving, but you can't use that audio for whatever reason and you can't fake it by putting spicing it in something else, then I would totally remove it altogether. That's what I do. If I cannot use the audio uh, from the shot and the mouth is moving, then I don't put it in at all. So let's say you're during bridal prep and, and all the girls are talking and laughing and maybe uh, the groom is reading his letter as all this is going. You can put it in and drop the volume very, very low so it's very, very subtle and you can barely hear it. But you can hear it. This just adds to your wedding film so much. Number three is lack of establishing shot. When I first started creating wedding videos, filming the outside of the church building or the venue or something like that wasn't something that really registered with me. I was like, the couple is what's important and the couple is who needs to be filmed. And so the viewer didn't always know and understand where we were while they were watching it. And so a way to avoid this is by simply getting an establishing shot. Yes, drones are very nice or a wide gimbal shot or something like that, but it doesn't even need to be that way. Go outside with your tripod and just sit it down and film the church building, film the ceremony site, film the venue, whatever it may be, just so we know where we are. It seems to be easier to get ceremony establishing shots uh, just because there seems to be a little bit more time usually than the reception stuff because the reception, you go straight from the ceremony to the reception and it might be crowded or whatever. Keep in mind, always try to get an establishing shot, even if it's just one quick shot of something outside. Something that lets your viewer know, that your audience know that you have changed the locations will be very helpful in telling the story of your wedding video. Number four is no movement, then movement. Yes, I made up that term, it's very scientific. I do have a master's degree. What I mean by this is be consistent with your shot. Be consistent within your shot. So if it's a static shot, meaning the camera isn't moving, have it not be moving the entire time. If it's a slider shot or a gimbal moving shot, have it be moving or sliding the entire time. Don't have it start still and then start moving across the screen. It's very jarring and really can take people out. So how you fix that is have the entire shot be static, have the entire shot be movement. While you're filming, if you know these things, then you can take a little bit more time with your sliders 
or with your gimbals or whatever it may be to kind of slowly move out from one way or the other. Also, with this, don't change direction in your shot. If you start sliding to the left or the right, then keep it, don't start going one way and then back the other in the same shot. That can also seem very jarring. One of the best things that you can do for your wedding videos is have someone critique it. And I'm not talking about just uh, some random person that you meet, hey, watch this and tell me what you think. I'm talking about professionals in the industry that know what they are talking about. I've had Sarah Pendergraph of Pen Weddings and Rob Adams of Rob Adams Films critique a couple of my videos and it was eye-opening and it has helped me so much to learn and grow and become a better wedding filmmaker. John and I are accepting a few wedding videos for us to look over and critique. So if you are interested in having us do that to help you grow your craft and become even better, make sure to send us an email from the description below. So there it is, four common mistakes that wedding filmmakers make when creating their wedding videos. What are some of the mistakes that maybe you see that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button so that we'll know. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that bell so you'll be notified every single time we upload a new video. And until next time, see ya.